Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Today we are talking about greeting cards. Yep, you heard me right. <laughs> Making our own personalized greeting cards. Now, this is a terrible greeting card. It's got nothing on the inside. All it has is the stamp on the back and a picture on the front. And while we're not going to be doing full color, we're going to be doing our own personalized greeting cards from start to finish. And this greeting card today is for Ben Franklin. <laughs> Happy 317th birthday on the back. I've got my logo. There are some tips and tricks to doing this. And on the inside, I've got my personalized message and signature. So one of the things I like most about this is that not only can we make the greeting card, but we can also make the envelope that it comes in. So we can just slip this card in here and fold this over and we're ready to go. So this video today is going to be using one of the least used materials by people, laserologists. Um, and that is cardstock. And today I'm going to be using 0 0.02, 320 GSM cardstock, I believe it is. Um, it is made by the company Primary, and it's made in the USA. And I'll put a link down below the description if you want to get some of that. And you could use two different cardstocks. You could use the, the heavy cardstock like this for the card and the lighter cardstock for the envelope. This envelope is probably twice or three times as thick as a normal one, but I like using the, the same one. And don't get my, you know, my colors are off here. <laughs> I'm not good with matching colors and painting things and stuff like that. But um, today we're gonna sh I'm going to show you how to make this from scratch. So let's get started right away. Let's jump into Lightburn and uh, I'll show you the entire thing after the video. There will be a download for this art library for the actual card and the envelope uh, that you can download and you can make your own just using that art library as a guide and watching this video. So uh, let's go. Okay, so we're getting started in Lightburn now. And you'll see I have a bunch of stuff on the screen here. This is my greeting card template. So this is what I use to make greeting cards. And today's greeting card is going to be Ben Franklin's 317th birthday. <laughs> anyway, I've got right here in the middle, I've got a 12 inch by 12 inch tool path. And this is the size of the paper that I'm using. I am using, uh, let's say, point three millimeter paper which is 230 GSM and I'll put a link to that below the video if you like I'm also use all of this came from my art library over here so these are all the parts of it that I have in my art library and I'm going to show you how I made this today I also have another tool path for the inside of the card over here and then I have the actual envelope down here and I'm going to show you how to do all of this today. So this one here is the outside of the card. You see that the graphic is on the bottom. My logo is on the top. And the reason for that is once we fold it, that's the way it's going to be. Then we're going to flip. We're going to actually do this one over here first and then flip it to the left and do that one in the same spot. And I'll show you how I did that. So here is the first one that we're going to do. And let me start from the beginning. I'm going to redo this one. So we're going to grab the card, put it anywhere on the workplace. It doesn't matter where it is. Uh, I'm going to put it right about there. And I've got a magnet over here and a magnet over there on the laser. You'll see that I have the paper loaded already with two magnets. And I've got one little magnet to spare for when I flip this over so it doesn't move on the second side. So I've got three magnets in total. You don't necessarily have to use magnets. Um, you can use, you know, honeycomb hold down pins if you have an aluminum honeycomb, whatever the case may be. I'm going to use magnets today. So that's going to hold the paper in place. And it doesn't matter where on the workbed that you're doing this. I'm doing this in absolute coordinates 
over here so that you know I know exactly where it's going to be on the workbed. Now we've got the beginnings of our card over there. So we have to figure out where we're going to put our graphics. What we want to do is we want to have this happy birthday Ben and we want to have these balloons. So I'm going to take and drag that over here. We want that on the bottom of the card. We want all the rest of this on the top of the card and you're going to do all of your own text. The way to find out how to position this is to grab hold of this toolpath, press control and the letter D to duplicate it. So now we have another toolpath on top of that toolpath. See it? I'm going to undo that. And now I'm going to come up here to the, if we go to inches, the height is nine inches. I'm going to click at the end of that nine and I'm going to put a slash or divided by and then the number two and press enter. Now we have exactly half of what we had there and that will be selected when we're done. You can see the handles. I'm going to hold shift and select the outer one now so that both of them are selected and then I'm going to come up here to the top. I'm going to push it to the top like that. Now we know exactly where the center of this is. So we can now line this up in the right spot and this is going to be the front. So um, it, you can do this by eye. You don't have to you know, do this any other way but than by eye. It works just as well no matter how you do it. I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to take this and I can actually align this one to the center if you want to see that. So right here now that's dead center over there. These don't really matter. That You can put them wherever you want. I'll put that one there. And that's like a standard greeting card. You put your whole message here inside here. You can do it any way that you want. So now we've got basically our card made. And what we can do here is go ahead and delete that toolpath because we don't need that anymore. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out. So I'm going to select the outer toolpath down on the bottom. I'm going to put that on the red layer. That's the cut layer. And now the only thing that we've got left to do, and this is an important feature here because we don't want to uh, fold this by hand. So I'm going to come up here to the top left and grab the pencil tool to draw a line. I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to drag across the entire, the entire plane like that. Now if I don't click it's gonna bend okay so we don't want it to bend. I'm gonna click and now you see it's still attached. I'm gonna right click to get rid of that. I'm gonna select that like that and now I've got that line selected. Now I'm just gonna size it to fit. So when you have a line like this all you have to do is grab it pull down with your mouse like that and you'll be able to see where the line is and I'll get it right there so that's one side and it, this is very easy to do we're gonna do the same thing on this side I'm gonna grab it and drag down you see and bring it right up to the edge right there so now with that selected we're gonna put that onto a different layer we'll put it on the green so now we've got that on the green. That's a completely separate layer and that's going to be perforated. So let's double click the layer over here to bring up the cut settings editor and we want perforation mode on. And in fact, let me put this into millimeters. <laughs> I work better in millimeters with this kind of stuff and that's set just perfectly just the way it is. I use this green line for perforations. So we're gonna cut uh, two millimeters long and then we're gonna skip three millimeters and that's the way we want this to work and that will be our perforation so that it, we can easily fold the card let me show you show you that really quick see that that's the way that line is going to cut right there we're looking good the only thing we need to do is make sure that line is in the middle so we'll select the line and we want to align this line hold down shift select this line we want to align this one to this one order of operations matter. So we'll come up to the top now and we want to align these along their horizontal centers. 
So we just click like that, and now that line is right dead center of this nine inch piece of cardboard. And guess what, folks? This job is almost ready to run. So let's go ahead and go to the perforation mode, make sure our settings are right. Our, our cut settings are 2725 and 100%, and that's what we've got there. If, if we didn't have that there, we would just highlight that highlight this and click assign then we've got our black layer over here so we're going to come to cardstock paper engrave we're i'm using the lasermatic 20 in 10 watt mode so i'm going to click on 10 watt click on this layer and click assign and it assigns 14,060. and then we've got our perforation mode right here and that or we got this one the green I have two of them it looks like here <laughs> got our green perforation mode set the same so let me get rid of let me move some of these tool paths down and we want the black to cut first so that's that one we want the green to cut second so we'll drag the green up there and then we want the uh, red to cut third so black green red let me bring red up. I have gold over here because it's in this graphic over here. In fact, I'll, I can get rid of that to make it less confusing and just do it this way. Put that onto the green and put this on. I'll show you how to make the, uh, the card later and that'll get rid of that um, gold line. And actually we have one more up here so I can delete that. There we go. So now we just have what we see on the screen. So Black will be first. If I right click on this, that will be the first layer. Green will be second, which is the perforation mode. And red will be third, and that will cut it out. Now, once this is cut out, we're going to switch over to the laser now, run this job. We're going to do the engraving and the cutting. Once this is cut out, I have a note up here, flip right to left <laughs> to make sure that I get this right. So after this is cut out, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to flip it from right to left and then bring this one in. Now here comes the important part right now. We have to grab hold of this and figure out where exactly are we on the work plane. Right now if we come up to the very top corner here you'll see we've got X pose and Y pose. That's X position, Y position. We're gonna write those down on a piece of paper. So let me do that right now because we need to be able to use that exact same spot so the X pose is 120 and the Y pose is 264 and there we go so now I've got that written down for later and um, we're ready to run this job let's switch over to the laser real quick turn it on might be a good idea to turn it on <laughs> there we go it's going to home and we are now ready to run this job I've already got the laser focused I've got my magnets down so all I have to do now is uh, hit the start button so we're gonna do this and then I'll speed up the video and then we'll come back
Okay, I may lose my mic a little bit here, but let's take a look at what we've got. And without moving anything, we don't... This can be hard with paper and one hand because of the camera. But there is our card. And I don't know, you can't probably see that perforation mode, but it is on there. I don't know how well this is coming out on camera. But it does have the perforation on there. So now we had this on the work bed like that. So what we have to do is flip it from right to left and put it back in the same spot. So I'm going to flip this right to left, put it exactly back into that same spot where it was cut out from. And now I'm going to take my little bitty magnet <laughs> and I'm just going to put it on here. Just to keep it from moving. That little piece sticking up is okay. It's all set to go now for the other side. So now we can go back to Lightburn. Alright, so let's go back into Lightburn. And here is the one that we just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this out of the way. Off of the work bed. Now I'm going to come to this side and grab the other side over here. And what I'm going to do with that selected is I'm going to come back up to my X posts, Y posts. And if you remember, I wrote it down. So the X is 120, and then I'll press tab, and the Y is 264. And that is the exact same spot that this one was just in. And we are now ready to run this job because we're only running that one black layer. So uh, I don't think I need to change anything at all here. There's nothing else on the work bed. All I have to do is come over to the laser tab and come up here and hit start. So let's do that. see it is completely finished so let's open this up get this little small magnet off and pick up the card itself and now we have the front side that says uh, happy 317 <laughs> I know this is hard to see on the camera I'm gonna take some pictures and put the pictures up and on the other side, we've got happy birthday and our personal message. Now here is the important part that you'll see is the ease of folding this card with that per perforation mode. So we now have a perfect 4x6 birthday card ready to put into an envelope. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the envelope itself. So there we are. There is our birthday card. Next step is creating the envelope. All right, let's jump back over into Lightburn now. And let's create this envelope that you see over here from scratch. So I'm going to grab all of this, move it off to the side, 
and we're going to get started on designing and actually I want to keep this part right here we're going to bring this one back because that's going to be our design right uh, our design template right there all right so I've changed the uh, paper hey are you guys still with me <laughs> uh, I appreciate you sticking around and staying with me the second part of this video now is going to be how to make the envelope and it's really pretty easy so uh, because you stuck around with me uh, there's going to be a special message that's going to pop up on the bottom of the screen sometime between now and the end of the video and you're going to want to see that because it's going to be a, a gift for you for sticking around and I know my loyal viewers they stick around so uh, let's keep going with part two now and let's get back into Lightburn and let me show you how to make the envelope for this greeting card where is that greeting card all right here it is <laughs> happy 317th birthday to Benjamin Franklin <laughs> and on the inside is the message happy birthday Ben and there you can see the thank you note all personalized what makes this really nice is that it's personalized and you don't have to do this in white if you do a little testing on the paper you can remove the color and make it black so keep that in mind and you also don't have to do the inside so you can do the inside by hand if you prefer so here is my final card I think it came out great it is a four by six and now we're gonna make the envelope for this card and of course it's got my logo on the back there and it says you know made for Ben Franklin <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna deliver it to him but let's go back over into Lightburn now and let's make the envelope for this card all right so we're back here now and we've got our toolpath that we originally started with and actually I want to keep this toolpath so I'm going to duplicate it by doing control and D and just put it off to the side the duplicate so if you remember we had this sized at six by nine inches and that's the size of this greeting card what we're going to do is make sure this is locked we're going to come in here and change the nine inches to 9.1 and there we go so now it's scaled in both directions and now we've got our right size template for the envelope so what we need to do is make the flap up on top and the two flaps on the sides now hopefully I can do this without making mistakes or making it confusing <laughs> um, so the first thing I'm gonna do now is make this wider up here so I'm going to just do control and the letter D to duplicate this one over here because this is my tool path and you see this is 9.1 by 6. Okay, so 6.06. .06. And uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, come back up in here. The 9.1 we're going to divide by 2 slash 2 and press enter. And then I'm going to grab this one over here so that they're both selected I want to align this one to this one we're going to align it like that and then we're going to align it to the top and there we go so what we have to do now is we have to make the two side tabs each one of the side tabs is 12 millimeters or that's what I want it to be anyway you can make it whatever size you want so right now we've got on this one here just going to select that one the width is 154.093 we're going to change 154 to 178 and press enter and now we have those two flaps now the only thing we need to do is make this all a cut so we're just going to drag over both and weld them together over here and now we have those two flaps on the side bear with me because <laughs> you're gonna see how this works in just a minute so now we have to create the top flap and in order to create that top flap we need to get another rectangle so I'm gonna use the bottom now as my guide and I'm gonna start from here I'm gonna drag across to here and you see saw it snap to the end over there and I want to make this top flap about 30 millimeters high 
So I'm going to uh, leave it unlocked. I'm going to go to the height over here, change it to 30 like that, and there we go. And now, with that selected, um, I can select this and whoops. <laughs> with that selected, I could select this and really quickly move it up to the top like that. And then we want to go a little bit further. So we're going to go past the top with the arrow key until we get right there. And that's the perfect spot right there. So now we need to make the flap. So at this point, we're going to go to edit. Uh, we don't have to convert this to a path. We're going to go over to tools. We're going to go to warp selection and four points like that. And what we're going to do is just make this flap. So I'm just going to drag this and just just drag it over like that. I'm holding shift so that it drags both sides at the same proportion. Okay. So that looks like a good flap if you ask me. Right there. Now I'm going to select it and I'm going to come, I'm just going to move it up just a hair so I can work with it right now. I'm going to come to node edit right here. Now we don't need to convert this to a path because we've already deformed it and that converts it to a path. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on there and hit the B key. When I do that you see it turn into a green square. See that? That means I broke that line. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. See it turn green? I'm just going to hit the B key on my keyboard. Now I'm going to select just that one piece and put that on the green line like so. So now we have our perforation. Now we have to do the same thing over here on this. So we have to select this. We're in the selector tool. It's already selected. We have to come to node edit, zoom in, figure out where we need to be, which is right here. I'm going to press the I key to insert a node and then the B key to break that node and you see that that just broke it it's a green square now we're gonna move over to the other side and do the same exact thing gonna come over here we're gonna follow this line straight down to here we're gonna hit the I key and then the B key and we just broke that so now we'll click off of it go to the selector tool select just that one like that and delete it there we go and all we need to do now is grab both of these and move it into position like that now this one should be on the red cut path so now we have our top flap and the only thing that we have to do now is make the bottom perforation mode right over here so we'll just select this one press control and the letter D and run this down like so let me zoom in so we can see it now I want the perforation to be just slightly past it just like that so now I've got that one there I've got the one at the top what do I do for the sides well pretty easy with this one selected control and the letter D and now we're going to turn it sideways by pressing either the comma or the period key I know we're doing a lot of keyboard stuff here today but uh, this is pretty much how it's done so um, now we're going to come over here and use our arrow keys get it right to about there and that looks pretty good right there and we're going to size this so we'll grab it move off to the side so we can see it and bring it down to about there we're going to do the same thing on the bottom we're going to grab it click hold drag bring it to exactly where we want right there now the only thing we have left is the other side we'll grab it control on the letter D my favorite command run it over to the other side and we're done <laughs> there is our envelope oh let's go ahead and fix these the bottom here to make it a little bit rounded so that it, it looks like a nice flap so let's come down here to way down to the bottom left to the radius tool and uh, I think this should be set to 10 and it is it's set to 10 we're gonna put a radius there we're gonna put a radius there and we are finished that is our entire envelope what will happen now is once we cut this out it'll cut all of the red it'll perforate all of the green 
and then we'll fold this bottom flap down here up this way and fold these two over and glue everything in place and fold this one down when, we, when we've loaded the uh, greeting card. So I just want to make sure that all of my perforations are a little bit bigger than the actual cut and as you can see here this one is not so I'm just going to move this over just a hair like that. I want the perforation to be just slightly outside the cut and that way uh, we know that it's going to fold properly. So I'm just going to check this all the way around and that all looks good and this job is ready to run. And we can take a preview if you like and there you go that might give you a better idea of what's going on here. So there we go. <laughs> That was actually pretty fast and easy. If I wasn't showing you how to do this and you know doing a, a tutorial, I can actually do this in like, I don't know, maybe under a minute, make this entire envelope. So uh, it really is very fast and very easy. And I'm just gonna grab all of these and group them together. That way I don't move them. And now I can delete this one, which was unfinished by the way. And I was doing it in a different fashion which uh, I changed my mind I don't want to do it that way so now I have my new template down there for this and let's see if this all works <laughs> by uh, checking our cuts and layers one more time and you'll see that everything's in the wrong position here oh no it's in the right position so all we need is this uh, green perforation and the red cut and that's it so we are ready to jump over to the laser tab switch over to <laughs> the laser where I have my paper loaded and hit the start button and this is going to be quick so there you see it's doing that perforation square and now it's going to come back around and cut the whole thing out and we'll see what we've got <laughs> different colored papers you sometimes get a slightly different result so this is a light blue paper and it is giving me a little bit of trouble coming out but it'll be just fine so there is our envelope now you can see our side flaps are right here and hopefully I'm, I'm in screen in camera here <laughs> so these side flaps will bend right over like that and we have that one little tear that I should have been more careful with so we have the two sides we'll flap these over and then we have the bottom flap that comes up like this and now all we have to do is fold these over glue them in place don't look at my little mess up over here <laughs> And slip the the greeting card inside so there you have a better view of what we just did in light burn except for my little mistake over here when I pulled it apart um, and I could always do it this way as well but there I have another one there oh, whatever that's close enough <laughs> for this demonstration so I'm gonna go and put this together now and then we can stick our greeting card in and see how it works all right, I don't know how well this mic is going to pick up over here, but um, I've got this is the actual cardstock that I was using, and I got this on Amazon. I hate to say, but it's 12 inch by 12 inch smooth cardstock, and um, on the back here, um, I'll put a link to it in the description. But you get six sheets of each color, you have five different colors. So you get 30 sheets all in all. So now I've got my card, fold, my uh, perforations folded over. And all I'm going to do now is just 
put some glue on these and fold them in place. So I've got my Elmer's school glue here and this is a, a, a great glue to use because it's clear it dries clear so you won't see it on the card uh, if you make a mistake and it's only like 47 cents a bottle when you I buy this by the case so I'm just gonna go ahead and run a bead down this side the nice thing about it is on paper it's a really good hold and then I'll run a bead down on this side like that now I'll just fold this part over fold this part in and hold it in place so I'm gonna come back to that I'm not gonna hold it in place just yet because I want to do this side so I'm gonna fold this side over hold it in place now I can hold both sides in place and just rub my fingers back and forth on it and after maybe about a minute or so it's it's okay to let go so it just takes about 30 seconds to a minute and I just rub my finger over it like that a couple of times and it should be ready now I'm gonna let it dry I'm just gonna give it a minute to dry wipe off any excess that might be on there go back over it one or two more times you guys know how to use Elmer's Elmer's glue and now I'll just pinch it in my fingers for a couple of minutes and it'll be ready to use um, we are going to get the card now and see if all of this trouble actually worked before that's even dry and we'll take and put the card right here and slip it into the envelope and this one is just a little bit tight but it does work so maybe 9.2 instead of 9.1 and that will work perfectly okay so what I've done I've rerun the job <laughs> on another sheet of paper and I've got another envelope and this one doesn't look torn like that one uh, so this one is all assembled it's like maybe 40 seconds later <laughs> maybe a minute later and I changed that size to 9.2 here is our greeting card fits perfectly into the envelope as you can see ready to give to someone and just that one little change to 9.2 makes it absolutely perfect so there we go there is our greeting card there's our final envelope and you could always engrave something on this side of it too if you wanted to and uh, that is about it right there all right so after all that <laughs> finally got it all finished and I'm just sitting here and uh, admiring my work so here's our greeting card here is our envelope I, I think the second envelope looks a lot better than the first one <laughs> I didn't you know I made the cut just a little bit slower and I was a little more careful with the glue so uh, perfect fit now changing it to 9.2 fits right inside the envelope ready to use ready to give and like I said this is the perfect way to make personalized greeting cards and folks it's not going to take as long as it took to do to uh, shoot this video shooting this video you know I have to think about every little thing that I don't want to miss for you guys um, that sometimes I just overlook and I actually had to retake it four or five or six times to get it perfect but uh, I think that uh, if you follow the whole video if you didn't skip through it um, you're gonna be able to make this just fine and I'm going to also include below the video right down below I'm gonna include the art library for this so that you can see and bring these things onto your screen and design it yourself I you know I I get a lot more satisfaction out of things that I design myself and make you know I'm really proud of this card <laughs> I can't give it to Benjamin Franklin but I'm really proud of it it came out perfect uh, in the end so I just had to run that one extra sheet make it just a slight bit bit bigger 
and I am going to include that art library so you can get an idea of what I've done and see it on your screen while you design yours and the important thing here is learning how to design it more more so than actually making the greeting card and once you've got it made your own design create your own library bring it in and keep that design for the future and every time you need to make a greeting card you can do this uh, in probably less than four to five minutes start to finish when you have your templates so um, there we go now I'm just gonna say goodbye and we'll be finished and there'll be a, a surprise for you down the bottom of the screen for hanging around Thank you.